This is the human heart. Central to our physical body, our survival, revered by poets throughout history as the emotional center of our being. The place we actively touch when asked to point to ourselves. And now, what we have known intuitively is being understood scientifically. Researchers are unlocking a new science of the heart that could change everything we know about health and our interconnected nature. Coherence is a state of balance between heart, mind, and emotions, creating a favorable cascade of neural, hormonal, and biochemical events that benefit the entire body. But this phenomenon not only benefits us personally, it affects everything around us, emitting an electromagnetic field that can be measured up to three feet outside of the body. When you are in coherence, your heart resonates at the same frequency as the Earth's magnetic field. This frequency positively affects everything around you. When a group of people are in coherence together, this effect is magnified. Could communities synchronized in coherence lower violence, accelerate cooperation, and global harmony? This is the purpose of the Global Coherence Pulse. If we can measure the impact of thousands of people in coherence at the same time, it could lead to a breakthrough in understanding the full potential of the human heart. All you need to participate is your presence and your heart. To take it to the next level, join the research study by downloading the app and getting an HRV monitor to measure your personal coherence. The world needs it more than ever before. Each human heart is unique and magnificent by itself. But imagine what could be possible when we unify. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us this morning, this evening, this afternoon, wherever and whenever in the world that you're joining us, or maybe you're watching the replay, which we know many of you do. I am so grateful to be here with you and to be a part of this Global Coherence Pulse community. Thank you to the hundred plus of you who are in this room here with us today from all around the world. I've seen Spain, Belgium, Canada, the US. If you haven't already dropped it in the chat, do go ahead and put in where you're joining us from. And we have a very special pulse in store for you tonight. Not only do we have one of our favorite musical artists who we love and invite back again and again to join us, Theo, Theo Grace, who will be opening up tonight with some special music here for us in a moment. And uh, he actually, by the way, quick side note, has a Patreon page where you can find even more music and some exclusive stuff that you can't find anywhere else. So we will put some links in the chat of where to find him. And of course, we have the renowned thought leader, scientist, professor, best-selling, award-winning author, Dr. Shamini Jan, who I'm gonna share with you a little bit more about her after we go into a quick musical interlude with Theo Grace, who is going to share his heart, his pulse, his coherence with us. So that way we can all connect more deeply and begin today's pulse with some heart before we go into the moving from chaos to coherence, which is the topic of today. And we're gonna not only have the science of it, which is why we're so lucky to have Shamini here with us today. She's also going to give us practice and tools that we can use to bring greater coherence to our life. So thank you to everybody. We have Mexico in the house, South Dakota, the Netherlands. We have Florida, Carolina. Thank you to everybody here. It just warms my heart to see all of you joining us from all around the world. So without further ado, Theo, I'd love to go ahead and bring you to our Global Coherence Pulse stage here. And 
allow our hearts to be opened up by your music so that way we can drop in and receive the wisdom that Shamani will share with us. So thank you. Thanks, Jennifer. It's always so good to be here and beautiful to see this community growing and just thriving. So um, I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit. Um, one thing I want to say about just like art and, and song is I love how it evolves us. Like when we create things, it's an alchemical process and, you know, it, it transforms us. But then another curious mystery to it is that it evolves with us. And this song I wrote many years ago. And I just realized um, when I was singing it this morning again for the first time in a while that it's an invocation of the divine feminine. Um, it's an invocation of the beauty and the forest and, and the, the supportive, nurturing aspect of the Divine Feminine. So I want to actually invite us into our wombs, even the men, you know, men have wombs as well, just down into that, that lower center and to just sort of drop into that and give that some love and just call on the Divine Feminine to, to guide this um, this session, this moment together, and to just make it the most beautiful and nurturing experience possible for all of us. So you can just breathe into your belly, breathe into that divine feminine beauty that's in all of us. Calling on the medicine of the forest Living in the only moment there is Flowing like an ocean, green and golden Like a lotus from the mud She gives everything Everyone needs to be free Yes, she gives everything Everyone needs to be free So we can be all we can be All we can be all we can be So we can be all we can be All we can be all we can be Ever more. 
Thank you. How many of us, show of hands, use your reactions, drop something in the chat. Did that just open up your heart? We had someone mention about the video in the beginning too. And, you know, I was sharing with the person that every time I get to be a part of a pulse, host a pulse, watch a pulse, the opening video, the music, it really makes me cry out of joy and appreciation for our ability to be connected. In fact, I'm called to share a vision I had last night as I was falling asleep. I was shown that each of us who are light bringers, light bearers, beings of coherence, that we were implanted at this place, at this time on this planet to be sparks of light like candles. And our only job in this lifetime is to light the candles, light that spark in everyone else's heart and soul and remind them what we came here to do. And for me, that's what Theo's music just did for me. So I am so grateful to you, Theo, for lighting that spark of light in each and every one of us. And I did drop his Patreon link in the page. You can even get a musical lesson from Theo if that sparks your light. And speaking of sparking light, we have an incredible honored guest today who I am so grateful is here to share with us this Global Coherence Pulse and help us understand the wisdom of how we move from chaos to coherence, not just simple practice, but also biologically, the science behind it. I'm going to share with you a little bit about who our guest is. She is an extraordinary woman. Dr. Shamini Jan is the founder and CEO of the Consciousness and Healing Initiative, otherwise known as CHI, if you're not familiar with it, C-H-I as well as a professor at UC San Diego and author of the Nautilus and Ohm Times award-winning book, Healing Ourselves, Biofield Science and the Future of Health. And she has some very special little gifts for us. So obviously if you're here, that means that you signed up and that you got the emails. And so we'll be sending out some follow-ups after this with all of the special gifts that Shamini has for us. Shamini, thank you for being here, my friend, and thank you for sharing your light and your heart with the world. My gosh, it's such an honor. So wonderful to see everyone. So pleased to see everyone's videos on and be able to see you in real time and space. And thank you, Theo, that was just beautiful. And I love how you opened it by saying, I, I realized that this was sort of an invocation to the divine feminine. Um, and we certainly felt that. So thank you for just that beautiful, soothing music and opening us up to the power of vibration for coherence. I'm so pleased to be with you all this afternoon. It's afternoon my time. I'm on the East Coast here in beautiful South Carolina, surrounded by coherence of trees, coherence of water, coherence of the beautiful land here that surrounds me. And for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure to meet, I'll just share a little bit about how I've come to this work very briefly. Of course, being born here actually in the Deep South um, as a Southerner and also from East Indian tradition. Like my name may um, kind of give a sense of, I come from the Jan tradition, which is a very small philosophy, um, you know, kind of philosophy religion, you could say, um, where most Jans are in India. So I grew up here and um, surrounded by Baptist Christians and learned really soon that there was a joy in sharing diverse perspectives and being in synchrony, even when we didn't think alike. And that's gonna be kind of a theme of some of my talk today. Um, I continued on in neuroscience, got my PhD in psychoneuroimmunology, clinical psychology. Um, probably, uh, as our friend Deepak Jen, Jen likes to say, he tells me I've probably been branded with the term biofield, whether I like it or not. I've done a lot of my work in this area of the biofield, and I've given a lot of talks on that. I'm actually not going to specifically talk about the biofield today. We're going to experience it instead. But I would like to share some reflections from the science on chaos and coherence and the linkages between them. But before we begin that, Perhaps we can begin, and actually I will bring up my slides for this. I'm just gonna show you guys some slides today and then we're gonna go into practices. But the first slide, actually Theo, like you, kind of pays reverence to the feminine embodiment of wisdom. 
And that is Saraswati Ma, who is a guiding light for me. She is an embodiment of the divine feminine that brings together arts and science. So you see here that she's holding this beautiful stringed instrument, kind of looks like a sitar. It's actually a vena. You see there's a river behind her. Saraswati actually means she who flows. So, so much resonance with you, Theo, in what you, what you did this um, in the beginning of this hour. We often chant to Saraswati Ma to open us up to wisdom streams, whether that is because we're going to perform, dance, sing, play, or speak or learn. So I will chant this if you have, I've put the chant here in this slide, as you can see it. If you know the chant, feel free to chant it with me. Um, but we'll begin our learning from this place. Saraswati Namastabhyam Varde Kaam Rupani Vidhya Rambam Kareshami Siddhir Bhavatu Me Sadha Om Shanti 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 May the light of the divine feminine and all of her wisdom and all of her embodiments touch our hearts together today as we come into collective learning and practice to foster the emergence of a beautiful world that we all know is possible. I'm going to begin the exploration of our discussion by describing what I would call some myths of chaos. It's a real popular word right now. Chaos, everything is in chaos. Everything is in chaos. The elections are in chaos. The country's in chaos. The world is in chaos. It kind of feels like a downer, right? That's typically how we think of it. And what are the feelings that might come up often when we even hear the word chaos? Anxiety, so much energy. There's so much happening. Not all of it feels good. It's interesting though, because when we look at it from a scientific point of view, and science is such a beautiful language, y'all. I know you know this, it's why you're drawn to things like global, global coherence pulse. It's a beautiful language and method of inquiry to explore something, not necessarily dispassionately, but broadly, you know, kind of taking a broader perspective and going into a state of observation which is something that we really need right now. Well, what do we know scientifically about this term chaos? What does it actually mean? Well, if you go back to the Greek you know, origin of the word, you see that it's actually not nothing, but it does come from the Greek chasm. And a way of describing what that is, is formless, but actually not empty. The void, but again, not necessarily the abyss. And we can go further. I know many of you are very familiar with David Bohm and his wonderful work. And I just love his quote here because I think it speaks to this void that we may feel is being created by the chaos around us. It's an invitation. As David says, Space is not empty, it is full, a plenum as opposed to a vacuum, and is the ground for the existence of everything, including ourselves. The universe is not separate from this cosmic sea of energy. So I said I wasn't going to necessarily talk about the biofield, but it's invoked here, as you can see, because this is an invitation to us to come into the all and realign and reorchestrate our lives in a way that honors and begets further evolution. And this is actually what chaos is. So it's, it's not necessarily a negative thing at all. It's an opportunity. The question is how we will utilize the opportunity. And so what are some principles of chaos 
that we could really look to as we consider how do we move from what feels like chaos to coherence. Well, here are some principles we can say of chaos that can really bring us um, to an understanding and a pathway to actually work with this wonderful energy in a more um, productive way. First, what do we know about chaos? Well, first of all, there's actually the, I, the myth of chaos that it's a complete disorder is actually not true. When we look at it initially, it may feel like there's no order to it. But when we add the layer of time and space, as we do when we look at a fractal and watch things develop over time, we actually see that there is an implicate order that is driving this, as David Bohm would say. The other interesting thing about chaos is that, of course, and many of you I know know this, there is an emergence that happens that is beyond the sum of its parts. We've talked a lot about emergence in many gatherings that we have. What's interesting about chaos in the, in the textual definition about it is that a lot of people think it's unpredictable. It's actually not. Chaos in its typical term is predictable, but you have to look at it with the lens of space and time. So you actually have to look to the lineage to understand the information that's being present in chaos. And this is why our beautiful teachers of so many indigenous traditions say, we go to the mediums and singers lodge, we look to the past and we ask for the future to understand the lessons of what is happening today. So when we take a longer view of both time and space, we can actually begin to predict what is happening from our times today. And this is, of course, what the seers do naturally. Self-similarity is, again, fractals. And we'll, I'll show you some pictures of fractals. I know many of you are aware of it, right? As above, so below. Again, speaking to that implicate order that is actually part of chaos. Self-organization is also an aspect of chaos. And that obviously implies interconnection. There is an interconnection taking place in a chaotic set, whether we understand it or not, whether we can see it or not, the interconnection is there. It's always there, even when we don't feel like it's there. And this is important for us to know at these times. You've probably all heard of the butterfly effect, right? The idea that it's not even just an idea, but it's actually a physics reality that a butterfly can flop its wings in one part of the world and with the right set of conditions actually be the tipping point for a hurricane in another part of the world. What does that mean? If that butterfly flapped its wings somewhere else or in a different way, that would not happen. So this tiniest thing, the tiniest change, including our behavior, our intentions, our thoughts, our actions, can actually be part of a greater whole that instigates a large effect. And our beautiful scientists that have been studying collective coherence, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, have demonstrated this to some degree, maybe not yet at the fractal degree, but we're getting there. Another principle of chaos that I wanted to highlight for us is this idea of mixing. So this is, this is common in a fluid dynamic system in what we call a chaotic system that we don't always hang together in time and space at the same time. We actually float around and we may intermingle. And even though we may be on opposite sides of the world or even on opposite sides of perspectives, we're still reflecting each other. There's a mixing that is happening even when we don't stay in the same place and that mixing is actually still interconnected and helps to feed the larger whole. So these are some lessons from these different aspects of chaos that we can bring to bear when we think about the pathway from chaos to coherence. This is so beautifully demonstrated in nature, as we know. So here we have you know, this particular form of broccoli. Doesn't that broccoli look good? I mean, I don't know about you. Most kids I know don't care for broccoli. If they look at this broccoli, they may actually eat it because there's something about it that just brings them into it, right? There's uh, something so inviting about being able to see the self-similarity and the fractal nature of life. 
And so whenever we want to just be inspired by the larger meaning and be reminded of these principles of chaos, we can look to nature everywhere. Here's an example of river tributaries, but you could actually zoom in and it looks a lot like our neurons, right? So there's all of these ways that we're seeing this beautiful interconnection take place in these seemingly chaotic systems. It's a question of zooming in and zooming out and being flexible to be able to zoom in and to zoom out of a situation to see it in its larger whole. So a lot of people think this may be living at the age of chaos, so to date myself here, like is this, here's Guns and Roses in their early days, right? Is this really what chaos means? Actually, not quite. Again, that idea of chaos being, you know, kind of degenerate, it goes nowhere, it's all entropy. That's actually not true. It's more aligned with syntropy. And I love this, I wanted to share this. There's so many beautiful books that are being written and have been written on chaos, complexity. Um, and here's one that's seminal. Here you see that Mitchell Waldrop in his book described chaos as, as this. And here's the key to what the edge of chaos is all about. Right between the two extremes, what we think of is order and what we think of is complete, quote, abyss is a phase transition that is called the edge of chaos. And this is where we find complexity. Now, again, we don't have a lot of time to get into all of these nuances at the moment, but complexity, slightly different from what we call chaos because now we're really talking about unpredictability, but in a beautiful, holistically ordered way where now we have true creative emergence. That true creative emergence actually happens right at the edge of chaos. So you can see here that at that complex nerve point in the edge of chaos, we have an opportunity where the components of the system never quite lock into place, but don't dissolve into turbulence either. These are the systems that are both stable enough to store information and yet evanescent enough to transmit it. So to be spontaneous, adaptive, and alive. This is what science teaches us about the opportunities at the edge of chaos. Well, what about coherence? What do we mean by that? Well, again, depends on the discipline, right? From the science point of view, if you look at it, people talk about coherence in writing in terms of unifying ideas. This is important from the arts to kind of, the, and the liberal arts to sort of take a, a note from psychology, from creativity on how coherence is ex experienced. In psychology, and I drew the definition here from the American Psychological Association, meaningful connections between what they called psychological entities. What does that mean? It means that my set of beliefs are consistent, right? That my beliefs may be different kinds of beliefs, but they all kind of form a coherent whole. For example, I believe in nonviolence. Do my thoughts, words, and deeds cohere with the principle of nonviolence, right? Are they guided by a deeper value? In wave theory, what does coherence mean? It's actually about a relationship between the phase of waves. And now here's the key. A lot of times we think coherence means that the phase is the same. It may be or it may not be in terms of coherence, that means that we may actually be actually on different wavelengths, like literally, we may be on different wavelengths, but is the relationship between the phase of our wavelengths predictable? Are we in communication? Are we able to communicate and move together, even if our waves are not in phase? This is important when we think about unity and diversity. Right, that we don't all have to think the same way, we don't all have to do the same thing, but there is a need for that interconnection, dialogue, and communication to foster coherence and the emergence of a larger whole. So for me, the lay definition here then is that essentially we're talking about a hanging together. We're talking about a connection where we can be different and yet we can be in communication and stream and flow together. So now here's the question. If we're in coherence, do we actually cooperate more? One of the things that we're being begged to do at this time as human beings is learn how to cooperate 
with our earth, with each other, with the plant and animal kingdom, with spirit. So does coming into coherence actually facilitate that kind of cooperation? I'm going to share now a little bit of data. This is our beautiful nonprofit, the Consciousness and Healing Initiative. By design, we aim to foster coherence around how healing works and how we bring it out there in the world by purposely bringing in diverse perspectives. And that includes not just bringing in diverse perspectives in terms of race, color, orientations, but also our disciplines. That's why we bring together scientists as well as healing practitioners of many different sets, indigenous healing practitioners, modern healing practitioners, educators and artists, because we know that all of us have collective wisdom to bring to the table. One of the things that we did, this is just more on the initiative. Um, you're welcome to come. We also have free webinars every Friday with leading lights because we bring together these threads and facets of wisdom. Uh, last Friday, we had a wonderful drumming teacher, Christine Stevens, who talked about the coherent work that she was doing with drumming to foster healing. Um, next month, next Friday, we'll actually have an amazing founding father, I would say, in these times on complexity theory, Neil Teese, who is the discoverer of the interstitium, one of the discoverers of the interstitium, wrote an incredible book on complexity theory. He'll be talking next um, Friday. You can go to webinars on healing and just register. It's totally free. So this is a way that we're bringing together community. But one of the things we did is we brought together a community of healing healthcare practitioners and scientists to India. This was pre-COVID. And we went to the ashrams to try to understand meditation in the ashram from the people practicing there. And we just observed what they were doing. So thanks to a wonderful donation from our friends at Muse, we were able to collect simultaneous EEG and, and heart, um, heart waves as well. So we collected brain and heart waves. And we just observed them while we timed everything so that we could time stamp it to the data to see what happens. Do they actually come into coherence or are they all kind of in their own private Idaho? And are there potential field changes in the room that happen in just even these very, very small groups of seven to 10 people? We know about those large studies with thousands of people. What about these small groups? What's happening there? And we saw something really interesting. And that is, if you look at this video here, these are different people and their EEGs. And so these thick lines actually demonstrate EEG coherence between brains during the practice. And you can see that they evolve again over time. Coherence develops over time and practice. And interestingly, the time that we saw the most coherence was when they all chose to go inward. I find that really interesting. They weren't trying to be coherent. They weren't trying to make coherence happening. They just came into collective practice by actually intending to the interior of the body. They were breathing together. They were connecting with divine, however they experienced that. And that fostered the coherence between them. What about synchrony? Sometimes we get these terms mixed up. Um, that are pretty similar actually, but here we're talking about things that actually fire together. So there's a sense of we're in phase and we're actually moving together. There's a lot of really good data that's being published in very mainstream places. Um, HeartMath has been amazing. They are the pioneers of exploring coherence and synchrony. And because of the wonderful work that they have done over the decades, this has caught wind in mainstream organizations, mainstream universities, looking at brain synchrony in all kinds of ways. So meditating together is certainly a way that we see synchrony, but guess what? All of these indigenous and creative practices that have existed for millennia actually foster synchrony. Some of you know I'm a singer, so I'm you know super jazzed about telling you that when we sing together, we synchronize together. Our hearts synchronize together, our brains may synchronize together, but beyond that, we're not only synchronizing together brainwave wise, these studies are now showing us that when we take time to do that, and especially when we have that shared intention, we can foster cooperation between groups. This is key because in these studies, they're bringing people together who don't normally practice together. They haven't even met each other. 
right? They're doing something together, whether they're playing a game together, they're dancing together, or they're singing together. And they're showing the synchronization and they're also showing cooperation. So it's not just firing together and wiring together, it's wiring together in terms of actually instilling greater cooperation. So could it be that if we sing and dance together, it would actually be easier to get us all to do things together um, that we need to do? Should we be incorporating the arts, not just as entertainment, but as medicine, as it was meant to be? And that's why I'm so grateful that Glo Global Coherent Coherence Pulse gets this and Theo opens and closes this to seal our energy because it's incredibly important. So as the, you know, part of what we're going to do in practice is a minute is, is get ourselves ready to warm up so that we can sing with Theo toward the end and really continue to foster this coherence together. And I'm going to encourage you to do that, sing with others, you know, as a practice. It's so beautiful. I do want to talk a moment about spiritual coherence too, especially when we think about practices like singing and dancing. We all know that indigenous traditions, and I think I think very strongly, of course, being here on native land here in the United States, of so many of our First Nations brothers and sisters who come from such powerful lineages that knew how powerful singing and dancing were to not only honor, but connect with our ancestors for healing. They knew that this was a way to foster synchrony and coherence, not just between humans and even between humans, plants and animals, but with our ancestors. And so their practices, curanderismo, many others actually helped to foster the spiritual coherence. And what a beautiful time to be alive as a human being, to be a bridge between heaven and earth, to help bring the spiritual coherence in, to nourish us and guide us and facilitate our evolution as human beings. And I wanna show you this picture. One of the things that we're up to at the Consciousness and Healing Initiative is um, we're in production on a beautiful documentary in healing called The Energy That Heals. And as we were filming for this, we actually filmed a wonderful um, colleague who is part of our Healing Practitioner Council. She's a curandera, and her name is Grace Sesma. And she gave a beautiful interview, just so lit up, channeling the wisdom of herself and her ancestors. And we filmed her doing um, some healing work, uh, Olympia, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's sort of like a clearing of energy, really. And we filmed her doing Olympia on one of my colleagues. And after watching her, honestly, I was doing a lot, and I said, Grace, oh my gosh, I really feel like I could use Olympia, right? We all need support and help. And I, I said, would you mind conducting Olympia on me just off the record, kind of, you know, we're not going to film this, we're just going to, um, we're going to do this because I feel like I need some support. She said, absolutely. And what came to her was, of course, in the tradition, we often, or I would say in curanderismo, there often is the calling to ancestors. What I learned was, in this case, it wasn't just a calling of the ancestors to aid with the healing, which is common in healing work. It was actually to be part of the healing. Because again, looking through that lens of the fractal, when we are engaging in healing, we are healing the lineages both past and present at the same time. And the wildest thing happened that I want to show with you, while she called, the moment that she called my ancestors to be part of the healing, my director was hanging out just watching and she noticed something and all of a sudden she started snapping pictures we weren't even paying attention you know we were just in the moment there this is grace working with me when she called on the ancestors this beautiful rainbow appeared to encircle us both and then disappeared after we had thanked the ancestors for being part of the healing and i have talked to so many people after showing this and I know that this is not an uncommon phenomena. We often see this, of course, when animals are passing, when loved ones are passing, but also during healings. So it's so beautiful to think that as we move from chaos to coherence and we engage in these practices, it's a beautiful invitation and connection to our spirit and our ancestors to be part of the healing and the evolution is actually taking place on this ancestral level as well as for future generations. 
The data is so clear and so wonderful to share that it's not just one practice. It's not just one type of intention circle led by one type of person. It's not just one type of meditation. It's not even one type of singing that can foster this beautiful movement of energy from the edge of chaos to coherence. It's just a willingness and a shared intention to come into collective practice. So with that, let's take the opportunity to come into collective practice. And what I would like to do is follow the thread of um, what Theo has begun with the power of sound. When we explore coherence from the psychological and the creative side, we understand that the first step of it is to take all this energy that's around us and digest it and align it with our field, with our biofield, so that we can make best use of it. So let's practice that for a moment. And what I'd like to do is invite you if you would like to, I'm going to do this, it's up to you if you would like to stand, but sometimes it's easier to move and feel energy when we feel super grounded. You can do this sitting down, but you can also do it standing up. So let's take a moment and just make sure that we're really settled and kind of grounded into the body. If you want, you can kind of bounce up and down a little bit, you know, just make sure that you're really feeling your feet. Remember your physical body is this beautiful connector of heaven and earth. Your body is a beautiful instrument to channel divine wisdom into the earthly plane. So we open our energetic channels by some gentle sound making to begin with. And we'll all just do a nice hum. Now you're gonna hear me. I think we're gonna stay muted um, for now just to make sure that there's no funny sound business. I'll leave it up to the host to decide whether they think it's safe for us to unmute or not. I've done it both ways. Um, take a nice inhale and open up your crown. And with this humming sound, I'd like you to just invite the divine energy, divine beings, ancestral spirits, angels, guides, to nourish your field and expand your energy if it has felt shrunk. If, like some of you have been telling me lately with these solar flares, you're feeling too much energy, invite your guidance to help settle that energy into the earth. So we begin. Feel the buzz initially on your lips. And then what I've, I'm inviting you to do here is direct the energy from the crown down into the body, down the legs, and into the earth. You could start with a buzz and then slowly open the lips to allow more of an uh sound to facilitate that downward movement, what we call a panavayu movement of prana down the body into the lungs. So we're gonna do this a few times. Mm. going to feel a, a difference in the quality of energy as you go from kind of the buzzing in the lips to the uh sound the density changes the field changes see if you can just notice moment to moment how the shifts of energy move through the body recharging and discharging 
and you can move jennifer's showing us so beautifully you can actually move and kind of scan your field while you're doing this i really recommend this as nice warm in to kind of warm in the voice a little bit and not stress or strain your voice is a divine healing instrument every single one of you your voice is a divine healing instrument do not forget it mm -hmm. great so maybe now you're feeling a little bit more connected with your voice now we're going to connect with the root of consciousness itself in the beautiful shakti or rather not shakti but the bij mantra om i think all of us probably know it om the universal sound the body of consciousness itself unbounded but here we're going to play with om a little bit and we're going to resonate it in the upper middle and higher bodies so that we can be fully empowered with the om sound and be completely open to all the flows of divine consciousness in the body as well as out in the field. So we're going to use Aum. You may have been spelled, seen this spelled A-U-M. It actually, one of the reasons we chant it that way is because we're bringing in the divine reflection of both creation, maintaining energy, and destructive energy. That is what Aum is. It's all of it. So when we chant it in that elongated form, Aum, we're bringing all aspects of the cycle of life into our flow for coherence. So when we chant Aum this time, I want you to sort of place it here in your gut, okay? And we're going to, again, work with Apanavayu to move this flow of energy down the legs so that we feel really rooted into Mother Earth. We'll do this three times. Ah. down the legs, powering up the gut. Ah. And take a moment to feel into the lower body, the hips, the belly, the legs, the sacral, the base of your spine your feet. Perhaps you feel some more movement here, some more fluid, some more charge. It's a nice way to recharge and get rooted, stable, and begin to cultivate this reservoir of creative life force. So we're really creating this deep well of your being here. And now we're ready to take that personal power and expand it further into the collective heart. And just take a moment, very organically here, flap your arms up and down like a bird. Ah, and just sigh. Ah, have you noticed that just when we have a sigh of relief, it's very natural, right? Ah, and in fact, when most of us chant Om in yoga class and meditation class, this is kind of the vibration that we often chant it with, right? It's right here in the heart kind of an opening of the expansion of the lungs. And that's great. And now you can do it from this rooted place. So keep your rootedness here, feel your feet and still breathe into the heart and just feel for a minute as you breathe. How good that feels. Ah, I'm rooted. I feel my lower body and I feel my heart and my lungs expanding. It's every breath of prana. Ah, every moment new opportunity. Ah. And here we chant Om from this beautiful connected place. And I'm going to invite you to just feel your ancestors are here, your guidance is here, we don't have to think too hard about this. We're just going to go into the feeling. 
soft it's up to you if you can feel that energy just bubbling through you open the hands allow that energy to travel out the heart out the hands send it to those who you wish to send it to those who could use your love the most whether you know them or not If you want to make it a little vigorous. Oh. And if you want to make it soft. See what happens when you make it silent. Feel the stabilization of your heart in the collective field that we're building together. What a beautiful openness and expansion, clarity that is building. If you have any burdens, let this coherent energy allow them to release from the shoulders. We do not have to carry the weight of the world. Let us release our burdens in the sacred place. Oh. Oh. And relax. Now to seal our own, we're going to do one more and then we'll close. And this is to direct Om right here at the third eye, but I'm going to suggest that you do it right here at the tip of the nose. It's just easier, keeps us from getting dizzy. Here we're going to have some fun and we're going to make a spaceship sound. Okay, so some of you have heard, of course, the beautiful overtone chanting. Why are we doing this? Well, Om is universal, it's cosmic, right? So now we're gonna open to that beautiful cosmic aspect of the edge of chaos here and focus it, right? That's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna resonate right here in the nose and I'll demonstrate, this is fun too. We're gonna to be childlike, we're gonna enjoy. Cup your ears, so take your hands right here and cup your ears like this and just say hello, hello, hello. See how it sounds like you're kind of in an echo chamber, right? You can hear a little bit of an echo here. Keep that going. And make sure again you're standing you're stabilized you know your chest is nicely expanded you feel really grounded and open here. And then you're going to direct the spaceship sound on okay so it's a nasal on it's a variation of om in the nose and i'll demonstrate we'll do this just a couple of times to open to the cosmic level. Om. To the nose. Oh. And relax. Feel your 
your field for a moment. Perhaps you feel differently than when we begun. Where do you begin and where do you end now? Our self-similarity, our mixing, our entanglement are all felt when we come into collective practice and everything naturally emerges without too much need for effort. Giving thanks to yourself for engaging in a little bit of collective practice. If you had your eyes closed, you can open them now. I want to thank you for taking some time with me through this, you know, kind of more formal practice and invite you to continue to stay connected through the global coherence pulse. I imagine many of you come every month. It's such a beautiful way to drop in, in community. You're welcome to join us at the Consciousness and Healing Initiative as well. If you would like community on Fridays, we come together, as I said, typically the first Friday, you can go to chi.is to learn more. And if you enjoyed learning how to cohere your field and play and enjoy the sound of your voice, I'll invite you to jump into that free gift page where I give you a practice on grounding with sound and, um, Thank you so much for having me with you all. Just um, really very honored to be here. Wow, thank you, Shamani. I love the weaving of the science and the wisdom with the sound. And I feel like we could really go so deep into these worlds of, of sound and coherence and oh, I just love all the metaphors that um, of music and how it's this beautiful perfect structure that um, when we align with it it just brings coherence and so we're just gonna sing we're gonna keep singing and being in the sound together and this is a beautiful song by India Ari called I am light and it's a great way to just feel into that truth, that root of consciousness that we are beyond the stories, beyond all the distractions. So you can totally, one option is to just be lost in the music and, and sing along. Another option is to really feel that quality of presence, that you are the one hearing yourself sing. You're the one in this body in beyond all the forms and that the magic that that brings coherence. I love that, that we don't have to do anything but go inward and that naturally just brings coherence to everything. So play and, and be in the music and, and be in the dance together and we'll just keep this going. I am a light. I am light 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 I am I am not the things my family did. I am not the voices in my head. I am not the pieces of the brokenness inside. I am light. 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 I am light.
I am not the cause. I am not the mistakes that I have made, or any of the things that cause me pain. I am not the pieces of the dream I left behind. I am light. Sing it with me. Sing it together. I am light. I am light. Thank you so much to Theo, to Shamani, to Teresa and Kaylin and everybody behind the scenes who puts this together. There's so much love and coherence in this room. Shamani, thank you for taking us through that beautiful exercise. And uh, Theo, thank you as always for playing music from your heart. It's just mind blowing. It's so beautiful. Uh, Teresa, I know we have some exciting things going on. We've dropped in the chat, but anybody interested, Shamini's amazing free gift, Theo's Patreon account. I know Teresa has some other wonderful announcements that we're going to share. And we don't leave yet. We still have one more musical piece by Theo. And if there's time, Shamini, did you still, were you still available for any questions if people had them? Sure. I mean, and I'm happy to kind of open to questions if we want. We can have a discussion. Great. Yeah, I just, um, um, before we go there, I, I'm on my phone today, you guys, sorry, my speaker wasn't working, so it's not the best sound, but I just wanted to say, first of all, Shamani, thank you for bringing it all the way into the body. It's, it's the most important thing that we could be doing now is not talking about coherence anymore, but actually practicing it and bringing it all the way home and going inward as the first step in the inquiry. And I just wanted to have a moment before we moved on from what you did and then Theo did and what we experienced. And I, I could feel you feeling it. And I wanted to just leave a little space for that. Same with Theo or Jennifer. And then we can hear from a few people that might want to share what their experience was or, or if they have a question. And then and then, yes, we can have just a few minutes where Kaylin will show us the websites and make sure that we see all the wonderful things we can connect with, and then we'll close with this song. So, but I wanted to say thank you 
I love you. <laughs> I love you, Theo. You know I do. And Jennifer. And yeah, let's share our heart for a minute. One of the things that came to me, it was so much joy seeing people singing together. It's uh, something I'm very passionate about it, in my uh, in person. It's fun to do this online, but it's really amazing when we get together in person to sing as well. And many people that I connect with at these in person gatherings, these retreats or whatever will. It's amazing how most everyone is shut down from the power of their voice. There's always some residual trauma, whether you got laughed at for singing when you were four or your parents told you to be quiet or whatever it was, you know, but truly I've I've been in situations where my fellow singers, you know, on stage would be afraid to public speak. And I know so many wonderful leading lights who are, you know, speakers who would be afraid to sing in public or just, you know, a little nervous about it. So it's interesting to me how so many of us have um, issues with the voice and yet I will say it over and over again your voice is a healing tool listening to Theo we can feel the healing of his voice but I'm very curious I would like to know you know when we do our group here how did it sound for you to hear yourself singing with him what was that experience like for me it was very joyful and but it can bring up all kinds of things. I'd love to hear. I could bring a few people on. I just kind of can feel like ba- like Barb would. I felt like you were like right there ready to, to ask. So I'm gonna like uh, ask to unmute. There you go. I think you still have to unmute though. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Dominique, these live experiences They're just so wonderful. You have so much to share and you give it freely. Um, there was an article, or there's an opinion piece um, in, um, I think it was the New York Times the other day, and someone was using the term shaman as some evil doer. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I agree with what you just said, but don't don't give this shaman term to this person. I mean, what are you thinking? What do you know? And mm-hmm. when and, and when I think of a shaman, shamani, I think of you <laughs> immediately. Oh. You just you are so healing oh, just you. by being with us. And and yet you have this whole new dimension to this um, you know, this cultural heritage. Of, of being a shaman in that you are pulling together everyone else you know scientists you're bringing the science into it and you're bringing the artists into it and all of the other healers and you bring them together so wonderfully i can't tell you how much i appreciate <laughs> thank you just know, oh. knowing you and being here wow. and um oh geez i i've already forgot theo gosh Theo, your music, it's just, it's so moving. Do, do, is there a link somewhere where we can find, where where we can find your music again? I need this music. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll post it in the, I'll, I'll put a link to my website in the chat. You can find lots on there. Thank you. You can also look up Entheo on uh, Spotify or any stream. Oh, site. okay. Yeah. Thank you all I've... for bringing this together today. Thank you, Barb. You're so sweet. Um, the link for Theo, too, I just want to say it's a Patreon. So if you love Theo and ah, you want okay. more of his music to go out, you can go there and you can also offer him a gift of support and get all kinds okay. of wonderful stuff. And he has tons of free stuff on Spotify. So both of those links are going in there. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. Luke, I wanted to bring you on. Luke has comes on global coherence pulses and just about everything that has to do with um, 
feeding the field with love and care. So, Luke, nice to have you on. And yeah, that's to nice to And I'm going your way soon, too. I'm going for a week, two months in Manchester. But, yeah, I try to attend all of those when I can and some other groups, too. Groups, subgroups from ISF to meditate together because since the retreat in 2019 in, uh, in California with uh, Nassim and all, I, that really lit me up to the importance of doing what we're doing right now. And it doesn't matter the number, it doesn't matter. It, it's important. It's the best we can do at this point. I see so many people around me who get discouraged or angry with what's going on. Let's stop looking at the old word crashing, let it go and just feed the new one, bring some coherence so that the new word can be can grow around that. So uh yeah, thank you so much for doing this. And I'm glad to see the numbers. Like we were like 120 over 120, 120 people at some point. Mm -hmm. So this is yeah. great. And I really love Samini. It's beautiful what you've been doing. Beautiful work. And with all walks of life, with all traditions together. And wow, this week I went to a concert uh, with Baha'i people. They were paying homage to 10 Iranian women who had been hanged, you know, at the beginning of the revolution in 1983. And it was beautiful to see these people you know, from different faiths and from all backgrounds coming together. And uh, so, If I yeah. could speak to that for a moment, and thank you, Luke, really appreciate um, everything that you said and and you and Barb kind of pointing into that appreciation of bringing these different perspectives and people together and I, I will say as a CEO and I've spoken about this before personally I feel I still have a lot of work to do with the consciousness and healing initiative to bring all of these facets of wisdom together but we're, we're on our way and it's really important especially relating again to the topic that we talked about today coherence again doesn't mean that we're all necessarily speaking the same language, but that we stay connected and that we're listening. And I draw back to my Jan heritage and one of our principles. For those who may know a little bit about Jainism, um, one of our biggest tenets that people typically know us for is nonviolence or ahimsa, right? That was what inspired Gandhiji, Martin Luther King and others. So that's a central tenet of Jainism. But so is another principle that I think is so important for our times that we called, and I may be pronouncing this wrong even because I'm terrible with being an American born confused desi as they call it, being born here. But we call it anikantavat. That's how I say it, probably saying it wrong. But essentially what it is, is non-absolutism. So in non-absolutism, if you look to the root of what anikantavat means or the way that I exp experience it is that it's not just that all roads lead to the same place. It's that each of us are an embodied whole of wisdom. And so if we take the time to actually take in and listen to that wisdom, we remember the whole of who we are. And I do think that this is critical for our collective coherence. I've, I know many of us have said, hey, we got to quit just talking to each other, right? Like, we love each other, like, it's great, but we've got to, like, kind of expand the family out, right? And I will say, sometimes it creates some dynamic tension. It's okay. Can we it's hold the tension? Can we hold the space, right? Can we make it real? And can we build and hold this, the field of love so that all voices can actually be heard and the wisdom taken in? That is our, our challenge. And yeah, that is part of the old world crumbling. You're absolutely right. Um, because the old world just shoved it away. It's the other. It's like what Barb was talking about with the shaman. Like, what is that? That's othering. That's fear. You know, it's like something I don't understand. So I'm going to shove it away. I don't even want to look into it, you know? Um, You'll, your spirit will be your guide, but I will encourage each one of us to see if we could actually open the conversation with someone who thinks differently and not get triggered, like, or at least just deal, maybe not get triggered, but maybe we'll get triggered, but we just move through the trigger anyway, you know, yeah. this is what's going to build co collective coherence. So true. Heart it is so important. Calls, yeah, HeartMath calls that extending compassionate latitude. And I've been really using that, like really considering like when I'm in a situation where I feel that little resistance coming up in me that I just extend this compassionate attitude 
and I can listen so much sweeter and so much clearer and without any reaction and I can really show up with what's true. So I love that. Hey, I'm going to bring on one more person before we do some things. Jeff, you've been smiling there in the background. You've been like just really super excited and I'm going to unmute you. It looks like you're a friend of Jennifer's. Let's see. Ask to unmute. You should be able to do that. And Jennifer, we can't hear you laughing for some reason. Oh, you can't hear me laughing? I'm silent. Oh, laughing. now we can hear you laughing. Okay. Jeff, yes. Jeff is extraordinary. Well, He's one of my favorite humans. <laughs> Jennifer's been wonderful. She has helped me to open up what I've known all my life but resisted, which is a lot of what you're talking about right now. So um, how did I feel sitting here singing along with everyone? I just feel connected to everybody. And you've really brought me to a place where I... I'm able to connect with my daughter in Belgium right now, just through my heart. And I've learned that coherence techniques with heart math and uh, spending some time with Jennifer and having the, being lucky enough to be with all of you. It's really opening me up and yeah, life is getting better. So thank you all so much. And Theo, beautiful. Thank you very much. And Shamini, I had never heard about you until a week ago. I watched you on Gaia. And then this pops up with part of global coherence. So that's, oh, that's just how I'm finding that life works. So awesome. I'm in. Um, so great. Thank you for sharing all that beauty. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, I um, we could just have um, Kaylin just bring up the um, link so that you guys can see. And both Shamini and Theo can say anything about where to go if you land on those pieces. So maybe, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So this is my website and, um, you know, you got to know how to spell my name. That's the thing. But if you type my name in Google, because there's nobody else really that I know with my first and last name, I'm easy to find. And here's the website, lots of good free resources on there. There's a little quiz on like kind of whole person resilience link to the book. I actually have an album out fair warning. Okay, it's my first debut album. It's, it may not be what you think it is. That's all I'm going to say. Because I spent the last decade kind of singing in rock and heavy metal tribute. So it's got some of that flavor, in it, especially the first few songs. Because it's each song represents the experience of a chakra. So the first few songs are kind of heavy. You know, it's kind of like lamenting being human in a, in a very um, disturbing world sometimes. So there's some of that, but there's also the the fifth song on there imaginal cells i really invite you to take a listen to it's actually was inspired by our dear friend bruce the first time i heard him talking about imaginal cells and it's about what we're talking about um you know really the movement into the unknown and the beauty of the unknown and the transformation that is taking place even when we don't see it it really relates to today's theme my dear friend who just passed from stage four cancer the amazing jamie shadowlight is an incredible violin player and she plays on that piece. Um, so I think you, that's a song I think all of you will really resonate with. So, and it's on Spotify. It. Just type my name in on Spotify, you'll find it. Um, love to see some of you at in-person events. There are a lot of them coming up. Just go to events and you'll see them all. Maybe I'll see you at Omega or Esalen or Mallorca. Jennifer and I are gonna be there. Um, and Roland, Roland McCready will be there. You, me, and Roland are all speaking. Oh my God. Show. I'll drop the link in the chat in case anybody wants to join us. And Deepak, of course, right. Deepak Chopra will be there, our other mutual friends, so. And there's another website too, Kaylin, if you'll go to the next one. Yeah, so this is my personal, and that's where you'll get the grounding with sound. This is the Consciousness and Healing Initiative. There's so many resources here, it's unbelievable. Um, do get free healing reports, join our webinars, they're totally free, and it's just, again, a jumping off point to con continue to connect with so many amazing people in the community doing wonderful, wonderful work. And if you want to learn more about our work and you feel inclined to help support, um, I'm always, you know, very grateful for that. Um, there are ways to, to join as a contributor. Um, there are ways to help support our documentary and its launch next year and our healing hub. So feel free to contact me if you're interested in any of that. Great. 
I'm super excited to get you into the connection field so that people can know about all these things that are happening as one of their options for being in practice. So I am going to be in touch with you for sure. And I just nominated comedy right. for the heart math next year speaking. We were on a call last night with the Global Coherence Pulse and we're like, who should we have as a speaker for the <laughs> event? I just messaged Claire. I was like, we need Shamani next year for the heart <laughs> <Yeah. event." laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Uh, and then over to Theo, this is a new, a new, a new page that you've just set up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited about this. Um, so I've been a musician and an artist for like 15 years and I have many different offerings. I just put out a, a remix of Imagine by John Lennon. Um, mm. and I, it's sort of my own take on bringing that prayer back to the fore because it's still so relevant. And yeah, little stories about my my journey, lots of exclusive um, music uh, that I won't release anywhere else. And I have ambient music, I have pop music, I have uh, acoustic music. So it's a place where I just get to pour my heart out and you can get, you know, different tiers as usual with a Patreon page. Um, the $25 tier gets you my entire discography, which is like over 12 different albums that range from ambient to acoustic and everything in between. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, excited about this and connecting more intimately with uh, fans and people on the path. And my music is all for the purpose of, of awakening and this this thing that we're doing. And I have, I also am a music producer. That's actually what I do um, to make a living for the most part. And so I work with clients and I, I teach people about music production using Ableton Live. And I teach singing and guitar lessons and just everything to do with music and expression is my passion. And I just wanna bring these messages out into the world, which is why I'm sort of gravitating towards pop music uh, because it's such a palatable style. And yet the genre is just so rife with so much distortion and you know maybe chaos we might say but to bring more coherence and and heart and these ancient teachings just like into a modern kind of package and give that to the world um that's kind of something that really lights me up so if any of that resonates for you please reach out to me and if you can support at any level there's even a free level uh for my patreon page if you just want to check it out for a bit and see what i got going on and and then you can choose to donate whatever. Uh, so thanks. Uh, Theo, I'm so excited that you have created this opportunity for us to be with you both as a musician and a thought leader. I mean, I've mm. always appreciated your natural uh, thought leadership by just describing your own journey of getting <laughs> wherever you were going. Um, and I'm so excited about this. And I, I hope that these are the kind of ways that we start to support the people and the activities that are contributing to our coherence. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thanks for, thanks for inviting us. Mm. Pleasure. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the next the next tab is the connection field and besides the global coherence pulse we have a social network environment that's being um, hosted by a number of organizations that said we need a place besides facebook to gather together where the focus is on cultivating coherence and doing that individually and as a community and then seeing what happens when we go inward and we align with our purpose what kind of activities what kind of things start to emerge for us. So we have created this space. It's very beautiful and well held inside. It's free to join. And we have offerings happening every day that you could join to learn more about coherence or to be in practice. So you don't just have to come on every third Saturday of every month, but you could actually be connected with other people who are saying, I think this is one of the most essential things we could be doing on the planet right now is to join together and practice and embody coherence. So come play with us. It's super fun in there. 
And we're going to see if Shamani Jane will create a little island in there where we can hear what she's doing and make sure we can participate in hers from one central place. Same with Theo. Um, and then two more things. It's World Unity Week. Just started. I didn't even know this. I usually know ahead of time, but they just started. Today is the first day. World Unity Week is happening. So join. There's always some wonderful activity. 99 days towards Peace Week. So, wow. Right? Let's uh, see what's happening there. And then the last one, and I don't know if Omishar is still on. Um, if he is, Omishar is doing music um, as kind of like the house band for the Awakened World, and they have one tonight, and it'll tell you about World Unity Week. Um, so we'll put the links in the chat for those. And so there's always something that you can connect with that's based on on hard and joining together in community and learning and growing together. So thanks, Kaylin, for doing that. And then I'm just going to turn it over, Jennifer, to you and Shamini and Theo, if you guys have any closing words before Theo sends us out with some music. Thanks for hosting today, Jennifer. I just love you hosting. Thank, many thanks to both of you, Jennifer and Teresa. Thank you for holding mm -hmm. the space for us to connect together like this. Just beautiful, Theo, an honor to be with you as a fellow mm -hmm. presenter an artist today. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you to everybody who comes and shares your vibration at these beautiful gatherings. Mm -hmm. It's really an honor to be together and a privilege, honestly. Yeah. I agree. And I love so deeply, Shamini, what you did with the, the playing the vocals. It was kind of, for me, a beautiful combination of mantra, chanting, qigong, and just all of this magic as you felt the energy flow. You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to little, tell a little one of myself. I had something happen, like a minor little something. But you know how it gets under your skin. I took three flights to get back from New York yesterday, and I even was on a call with Teresa last night at my 10 p.m. She said, Jen, are you sure you can host? And I said, totally. And then just a small little thing happened, and it was the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back. So when I came on, there was something in my space. And I really want to acknowledge you, Shamini and Theo, and everybody who held space. When we're in coherence together, we do heal. We heal ourselves. Like anything that was there, I have a whole new context for compassionate latitude regarding the situation out of the work we did. How many of us, show of hands, let's put ourselves in gallery view for a moment here. How many of us maybe have a new context to come from and some sort of upset or sadness or frustration? Did anybody get a shift today at all? Show of hands. I think people have a few. There we go. There we go. Just show our hands. How many of us had a shift in context today or in consciousness? And that was my intention before we came on today is that how do we come and could we get some sort of transformation? I hear from a lot of brilliant popular friends and they always say, you know, I know I've made a difference when something transforms and how profound is it to be able to share that with one another and also to receive it. So maybe all go out in the world and maybe bring this transformation, this coherence, and this compassionate latitude to everyone and everything in our lives. And most importantly, remember to share it with ourselves. So that's what gives us the capacity to share it with others. I'm so grateful. Theo, thank you as always. Teresa, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this Pulse community. And so much love to each of you. And mm. so Nice. Well, as we, um, as we listen to Theo, why don't we just let this love that we're just like overflowing with right now, at least I am, I, I look at all your faces, I feel like we're all feeling it, and just let it pour into our environment and out into our gardens and our communities and anywhere this love wants to go today while we're listening to Theo. Blessings, everyone. songs called one becoming one
whole and complete Nothing can be wasted in infinity The real has been hidden away But the time has come for us to wake Deep in the dark I remember I feel it open my heart And I surrender truth is burning like a morning star bursting into all that we are oh we've come so far to find one becoming one one becoming Sharing in this love, abundant like the sun, into form spirit comes to give to everyone. So bang on the drums of freedom and love will care. Yes, love will carry us. One more time. Oh, love will carry us. One more time, just because it feels so good to let love will carry us. Deep in the dark, I remember. surrender the truth is burning like a morning star bursting into all that we are oh we've come so far to find one becoming one oh one becoming one No, you can't hear it, oh, but when you touch it, yeah, you know, you know, oh, you can't touch it, oh, cannot control it, oh, but when you feel it, yeah, you know, you know, oh, something inside is coming alive, and when you know, you know. The truth is burning like a morning star, bursting into all that we are. Oh, we've come so far to find one becoming one, becoming one, becoming one. Say it with me now, becoming one. Yes, one, each cell's becoming one body, and the cells of this planet, this beautiful mother Gaia, we are her body, we are becoming one, we are remembering this unity that is the truth through the distortion of our separation, and bless all of your journeys, bless our journey together as a family, and 
Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everyone, for coming together to remember together because we really do this all together. So, thank you. Great. Teresa. Thank you. I, I let uh, Kaylin mm -hmm. unmute you. So if you want to just unmute your line and say goodbye, we can just hear everybody's sound as we go today. Thank you for staying a little longer and mm. thank you and enjoy your day. But unmute if you want to say goodbye. Much love, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.